and the Heat's win over the Knicks on Wednesday night. There are a couple different storylines. Jimmy Butler played really well. Uh, P.J. Tucker had moments. But I feel like the two guys that we need to talk about, uh, for one is Duncan Robinson, who had 25 points and continues to show uh, his shooting ability over this recent stretch. And the other guy is Bam Adebayo because his passing, 11 assists, uh, these two guys really go and tie in together. 17 of Duncan's 25 points last night uh, were assisted by Bam Adebayo. And if you look at the other side of things, uh, six of Bam's 11 assists uh, were to Duncan Robinson. These two are not only uh, a handoff combo that we talk about that uh, that was just such a great offensive punch over the years. This is just pure chemistry between two guys. So I just want to go through some of the reasons uh, why it's working and also the, the looks that Duncan uh, in the past that Bam is kind of feeding uh, into other guys. The first one, starting out the game, 0-0. Zero, zero, what is Miami going to get to? Uh, Bam to Duncan. As I talked about, they have to start out the handoffs. Uh, it's a very favorable matchup for Duncan Robinson, this type of team, deep drop other teams that you see against that type of coverage. Uh, the reasoning is something I always talk about with Tyler Hero and other guys that can get into the mid-range. The reason why Duncan Robinson has such uh, a great ability against drop coverage is you just have to eliminate one guy. Uh, the screener just has to take out right here. It's Kemba Walker. Basically just has to take out Kemba Walker on a screen. There's no help. If he can do that, then it's a wide open three. So as we see here, the first play, Bam's going to turn to a handoff. Kemba's going to try to fight around the screen, and it does not work whatsoever. And look at the three Duncan Robinson's getting. doesn't matter if he is early season struggles. This shot is one he's going to take 100 out of 100 times because most of the time it's a very high percentage of it going in. So that first one goes in. Next play, next time down, uh, it's still 3-0. The next time we're going to see, as I said, Bam's going to get it, try to feed Duncan. Uh, Duncan's going to come off, but you're going to see the way that he can get off and find room right here. This is a pass I don't think he made last season, to be honest. I don't think he's made it in, the, in previous years kind of consistently to get open looks. If he turns right here and like he usually does and kind of pauses, feeds Bam, and then goes back into a handoff, it allows Fournier to recover. The only way that Fournier can kind of – you can get him kind of totally on his heels and kind of chasing is this pass right here that Duncan Robinson makes. He loops it in the inside to Bam, comes right back around. Now Fournier is fighting under his screen. Duncan pulls over the top and he hits it. Uh, it's just little things with Duncan. It's the little things that he's kind of progressing on and finding a little room to make plays. Uh, but if he continues to shoot the ball like this, it doesn't really matter what he does because even if he he turns and pauses with a guy right in his face, he could probably make a play out of it anyway. The next one, uh, this is just another combination of Bam uh, and Duncan just kind of working. But it's also, this is an intriguing lineup that I just kind of want to mention. You see Tyler, Duncan, uh, Jimmy, PJ, and Bam. It's just an intriguing way to go about things. Uh, and the more intriguing part is the way they set up this exact play. You're going to see uh, Jimmy and Tyler at the top of the play. Tyler screening for Jimmy, which I think is a really positive uh, combination that I think they need to get to more. Uh, PJ's obviously having a great night, so him spacing out to this corner on the strong side right now is just a, a great way to go about things for a possible kickout. Uh, Jimmy's going to drive right here. He's going to draw two bodies. The interesting thing is you look at the weak side, Bam's on uh, that dunker spot in the weak side. Duncan's in that weak side corner. The thing is, when Jimmy's driving like this, I go back one more time, you know that Mitchell Robinson, Bam's guy, is going to have to drop down. That means Bam is immediately knows what's coming. He's setting a hammer screen for Duncan. Fournier cannot even almost get in range. Duncan gets a wide open look, uh, and he knocks it down. It's something whenever you see Bam get a lob um, off of different screening, it's usually Duncan screening for him because it's just an easy way of go about things because – uh, he's a potential slip guy who can slip out to the wing and you can flow into a handoff or flow into an open look. Uh, but it also works in and in the other way because Bam's setting hammer screens. PJ does the same thing, but it's just something about this combination uh, that it just works because the ways they operate and the spaces they operate offensively uh, just blend together. The next one you're going to see in this inbound play, the Knicks almost totally doubling Jimmy in a way that Miami was doing to Julius Randle. Uh, it's not the same thing. It's not what you should be doing in a Knicks defense right here on this play because, as you see right here, talking about the Bam-Duncan combination, Duncan notices it, gives it right to Bam, Bam feeds it right back, and he gets an open three out of it. Like Just finding little creases, Just it seems like Duncan and Bam are playing at the same speed, at the same mindset that they know what's happening. Uh, it's just intriguing. Now to come uh, transition into Bam's passing, which I think went a little under the radar last night. Just 11 assists is one thing, but it's the way he was kind of getting these passes uh, another one, Bam and Duncan. Uh, you're going to see the defender going to begin to try to front Duncan because he, that handoff has been killing them all night, so he's going to come off another handoff. Well, not really. Immediately, he's going to cut back door now. Bam's going to feed it with the left hand inside uh, for an easy uh, look and pass, and I feel like that's the more intriguing part. If you're talking about 
the combination and the screening and the handoffs, when you can kind of find counters throughout a game and you can both of you can read individual defenders and notice that he's fronting and notice that he's kind of cheating up to try to get to that spot early. And then you can counter it and make a play and Bam's ready to make that pass. Uh, that's just the different parts. And that's what makes this combination so real and the chemistry so pure. The next one kind of going in another direction for a second, aside from the Duncan Bam combination, uh, Bam's passing is just kind of everywhere. Uh, we're seeing him almost utilized in a similar way we saw Jimmy be utilized against the Lakers. And I feel like the interesting part about that uh, is that they have multiple, multiple guys that can be put in that position. They have double-digit assist games. They kind of set up offense consistently. Right here, uh, strong side Jimmy, Bam, and PJ is not something we see frequently. You see Gabe and Duncan on the weak side. It's just not a consistent uh, strong side combination you see. Uh, but it's interesting when, as I said, with Duncan, you find counters. We're going to see right here, PJ's going to screen down for Jimmy. Uh, almost seems like, why would you think that PJ's going to come off the handoff here with Bam? RJ kind of gets stuck watching. You're going to see PJ immediately just make an instinctive cut. Bam feeds him, uh, and he finishes with a wild reverse that I just don't know PJ was ever making that type of finish in his career. He's playing at an unbelievable level. We saw uh, looking through his film, it's just nothing really spectacular because it's just corner shooting on kickouts and making guys pay. But that's his role. And then obviously seeing the way he is literally rolling uh, and making them instinctive cuts and bands feeding him. This stuff is something that just takes this team to another level. When you talk about a guy that was talking about offensive limitations, so now you're running offense through him and finding him uh, late in games for clutch shots. Last one, I mentioned them doubling Jimmy on that play in a similar way Miami was doing to Julius Randle. Uh, this is what makes this Heat defense so great. It was, we've seen them blitz top guards. We've seen them put guys like Caleb Martin on the Trey Youngs, the De'Aaron Foxes, the, the Steph Currys, and they slowed them down. But Miami's biggest off defensive strength is when guys play and run offense inside the arc. When they kind of find, uh, we saw against the Lakers, when they were working even through LeBron, they were blitzing and doubling LeBron, making you rely on backside rotations and kind of forcing you to make that pass to that weak side. Uh, it was working. The same thing Julius Randle does, except at a lesser level because they kind of spam it almost too much, uh, and it leads to predictable things right here. Uh, you see in this third quarter, Bam's almost reading these these now, and he just knows what's coming. Uh, PJ fronting Julius Randle is almost foreshadowing what you're going to see in a postseason matchup if you see – we've seen Kevin Durant him do it too and different guys. But he's going to force this in. Bam's ready for the backside help, comes in, swoops in for just a perfect steal, feeds Gabe, gets another assist right here. Uh, and finishes in transition. There was a lot of good things to take away from this one, but ultimately, this Duncan Robinson Bam out of bio combination is real. Uh, it's like I said, it is not just handoffs, even though we saw a couple of those. It is just pure chemistry with everything on the basketball court. As I said before, 17 to 25 points from Duncan Robinson were assisted by Bam out of bio, and then more than half of Bam's assists were to Duncan Robinson. And I feel like we've talked about Duncan Robinson struggling in the past. Uh, all he needed was his guy back. He just needed Bam Adebayo back to kind of get rolling. Uh, and now we're going to be able to see when everybody returns and they get fully healthy, the way that this combination can even expand even more uh, when things work out.